really important that we begin to change the mindset of young people to know that your vote counts. They don't understand that the legislative arm of government is actually a co-equal arm of government. We have an uh, incredible amount of potential. Whatever it is I was doing because of my personal DNA, it mm -hmm. had to be of an international standard, which is what, seriously speaking, is all about. Hello there. We are seriously speaking today still on the issue of your mind and what makes you who you are. Now, I promised you that I'll bring you thought leaders in the first few weeks of this year. People, I believe, have ideas that they can share with you that can help you make you a better person. At least I know you have all your New Year resolutions all tied in, but you may be able to add one thing or the other about how you think by the time you meet my guest today. She's female, she's a mother, she likes to be described as somebody who enjoys being a wife, a mother, and I describe her as a thought leader. You may not recognize her, but she's been my friend for a while now, and she's one of the contributors on Today's Woman, the magazine that I publish. If you don't go away, we'll get to meet this fine woman who I described today. Don't go away. Her name is Ifoma Idibe. Now, she writes that column on Today's Woman that's called Serendipity. And I think that's where I'm going to take this conversation from. And you know, I never really decided how I'm going to start this conversation. Ifoma, welcome to Seriously Speaking. Thank you very much, Adessa. I decided I was going to have this Thoughts Leader series. And I called you and said, I didn't tell you it was Thought Leader, did I? <laughs> no, I just said, come on the show. <laughs> I said, what are we going to talk about? I said, I don't know. <laughs> but I, I respect your thought processes mm. because I read the column myself. For those of you who don't, you better go and buy today's one. <laughs> but before that, you had already written. You'd written yes. in another magazine yes. and you wrote on the fringes. Yes. Now, it's like, do you like to sit behind and watch things happen and then you comment on them? It, that's an interesting question because I've actually asked myself whether I'm truly always on the fringes because you can't participate in life if you're always on the fringes. Yes. So it must be that I choose the things in which I will participate in. But beyond that, even as I'm participating, you know, sometimes when you're doing something, there's a part of your mind that seems to be standing apart and looking. And I find myself doing that all the time. So even if I'm in the middle of something major, some enjoyment, mm -hmm. I always find a part of my mind that's sort of asking questions and thinking, mm -hmm. you know? So it was a no-brainer for me to think, you know, when, when, <laughs> um, when I was asked what I would call that particular column, mm -hmm. I just thought on the fringes. Mm -hmm. It's the amusing thing is that people think that when you're on the fringes, yeah, you're not having a good time. Yes, mm -hmm. it's, it's, uh, it's um, a fallacy to think that. Yeah, I know your father was a doctor. Yes. Why didn't you study medicine and chose to go the line of business? It's interesting. Okay. My father wanted me to study medicine, but what he wants and, and what I want, two different things. And I think that was the first determination for me of, of how far I was willing to go in doing what it was that I felt comfortable doing and what I wanted to do. But I also think that life itself played a role in that because when I had actually applied to do the Masters in Business at Unilag after my first degree during the youth hall, there was an air traffic controller strike and I couldn't get to do the exam at that time. But when I could fly to Lagos, I, I went straight to the University of Lagos, went to the Faculty of Business and I said, oh, I was meant to do this um, entrance exam, but I couldn't because of the air traffic controller strike. When I think about it now, I don't know what gave what, me the gumption yeah, I mean, to think that they would set an exam for me specially, but they did. Mm -hmm. I sat, I did the exam, and I did an interview immediately. And I was told, oh, you've got a place. So clearly, again, serendipity, no coincidences. <laughs> and so the thing to ask is, why was there a traffic, an air traffic controller strike at the time? Um, it could have been anything. Yeah. I might not have done as well, it's possible. Yeah, that's uh, It's true. entirely possible that also, the, because the person who did my interview was a visiting professor from some South African country, you know, one of the Southern African countries. And so it is entirely possible that it was for me to meet him and have that interview with him mm -hmm. and to remember the substance of that interview that yeah, okay. I, I couldn't Can you remember what he asked you? He said to me, and it's so funny, because he said to me that what is the difference between a president and the prime minister? And I just For thought, a business school? It's, it's interesting. I mean, they can <laughs> ask you whatever they like. It's really mm -hmm. your thought process they're thinking about. And I said to him that the president is the figurehead 
and that the prime minister coordinates the arms of government. Okay, um, the president being the one who speaks, so to speak, mm -hmm. but the prime minister being the one who really relates more mm -hmm. particularly mm -hmm. to all the different areas of government and then feeds to the president as, as necessary. And it was amusing to me because I had never thought about it in, in, in that context at all. Mm -hmm. um, well, and you got the answer. I, well, I don't know, but it was a strange answer in a sense because the US, for example, has a president, the UK has a prime minister, and this was asking me about combining two different kinds yeah. of government mm -hmm. almost in a sense. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, it was, I, I remembered it simply because of, of the way in which the whole thing had happened. Mm -hmm. mm. But then that says something about the kind of person that you are. Do you never give up? Because you could have walked away and said, well, I missed it, that's it, it's my luck. You know how we all say lock, lock, lock? That's, again, um, I don't give up on things I want. People and so my determining point is, do I want it? And so sometimes when people are struggling for things, I, I always sort of pause and say, what is it I really want? And, and I always feel amused if people think, oh, um, if Omar didn't um, get this or didn't do this, because I just say, you need to ask me first, did Ifama want it? Mm -hmm. Because Ifama, if Ifama wants it, Ifama will go for it. Now, whether or not I get it is a different matter, mm -hmm. because the experience is also in the going for it. Mm -hmm. We always see the end point, mm -hmm. and the end point is not the point. Coming from private sector <laughs> yes. and then going into public sector, yes as an executive, you yes. know, what, was that transition difficult for you? The church helped me in that, and I'll tell you why. <laughs> uh, when you work in the private sector and you determine what you want to do, that's what it is. And you don't want to hear stories from the people who are meant to do it. Mm -hmm. This is what it is, that's what it is. You're being paid to do it, we're all paid to do it. We got to get on with it. Government is a bit different. Um, the church, it's totally different. But what the church did for me, because I'm very involved with my church... Well, at that, that point in time, you were running something with the Church of Transfiguration? Yes, I, I was the um, inaugural um, chairman of the, uh, of the Coordinator of Youth and Children, and also I became the head of liturgy. When you're involved with the church, everything is voluntary. You have volunteers. You can't force them to do things. They're not being paid to do it. And so you learn to manage people who may or may not want to do what it is, because different people have different reasons Absolutely. for being involved mm -hmm. in, in, in voluntary things. And so when you go to government where you're being paid to do it, however, you don't the do attitude it. <laughs> is slightly different because yeah. perhaps you think you're not being paid as much as you should be paid, and there's certain political other things going on. You have to be able to manage people to do what it is that they should be doing, even if they don't want to do it. And I learned that doing the things that I did in the church. So it that really wasn't, it wasn't a difficult transition. I, I just sort of said, oh, I see, this is what it is. But I also learned a very valuable lesson, which is this, that when you're working with people and you're trying to change the structure of a place, you will always identify those who believe in what you're trying to do. Even amongst the law. Even among, yes. Uh, they may think, will she be able to do it? Mm -hmm. But they're willing to work with you to see if it can be done. You also find those people who are standing on the sidelines and waiting and wanting you to fail so that they can say, I said so. Mm -hmm. Now what you do, what I did, was simply to identify those who were willing to take a, a chance that things would be different. Mm -hmm. And I made the others redundant. I didn't fire <laughs> them. I just simply thought, okay, it's fine with me if you don't want to do it. I won't ask you to do it. And I learned that human beings don't like to be redundant. They like to be part of a winning team. And so eventually everybody will come on board. Okay. But it takes time to get there. Okay, I mean, I will take, I will take, a, I will take a break now so that yes. I can take a short commercial break. And I'll come back and discuss those life lessons that you think that we can take away from your life experiences. Mm -hmm. I call this philosopher. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back. When you were on that board, we're very proud that we have a female on the board of the River Basin Authority, yes. you know, right? In, but, you left that again. Yes. And in the course of doing that as well, you ended up on the, what was it, that national conference? 2014 did, national did that, conference. Did that happen by accident? No, it didn't. Um, I, was in, I was appointed to the position in, in the parastatal, and then Wimby's was invited to participate in the national conference. Mm -hmm. And as the chairman of the board of trustees, 
um, my name was, uh, you know, I was nominated and, and therefore I went as a, as a WIMBY's uh, delegate to the National Conference. Were you worried? Were you scared? Did you wonder why? Did you think you could contribute? I always think I can contribute because, because <laughs> my, my views may be sometimes off-center or different from what other people think, but there is always something to be said for having a point of view, mm -hmm. whether or not other people mm -hmm. accept it or not. I must wind up, but the truth is, fortunately, I mean, I have connection with this woman, so I always tap in once in a while. Because, I mean, I also feel that at the end of the day, it's about who you want to be in 2016. Find it and be that person. And if you're that person, you may not be rich. But even if you're not rich, you'll be happy. Yes. Pursuit of happiness. On this note, we'd like to say thank you for watching and thank you so much for spending this half hour with me, regardless. Thank you very <laughs> much, Adessa, for having me. All right, then. So we'll see you again next week. Bye-bye.